going to talk about intermolecular forces. So we're going to define it at first. Uh, intermolecular forces are attractions or repulsions which act between uh, neighboring particles. So the part particles can be atoms, molecules, or ions. And so what we're going to do is we'll start with the weakest intermolecular force, and then we'll make our way up to the strongest intermolecular force. Okay, so the weakest uh, is known as London dispersion forces. And the London dispersion force is a temporary attractive force that results when the electrons in two adjacent particles occupy positions that make the atoms form temporary dipoles. So down here, as you can see, uh, there's chlorine molecules. And so there's no electronegativity difference between these uh, two chlorine uh, atoms that make up the molecule. And so the bond here, uh, these are more or less shared equally, these two electrons here. But at any given moment, these two electrons um, could be found over here. And then you'd have a partial negative charge as a result, and then partial positive. And just say at that same moment, these two bonds here, um, or sorry, these two electrons here that make up the bond are found here. This would be partial negative, partial positive. And then the, there would be a slight attraction between uh, this partial positive and this partial negative, and you represent that with lines, uh, this red dashed line. Okay, the next uh, interaction I wanna talk about is dipole interactions. And uh, they're stronger than London dispersion, and they're a result um, of polar bonds that are in molecules. So if you have a big electronegativity difference, you can have a polar bond. And so here you have uh, hydrogen and fluorine that make up this molecule and these two electrons. Um, again, electronegativity is the ability to uh, attract electrons uh, when an atom's ability to attract electrons when uh, in a bond. And so these two electrons here are going to be pulled towards the fluorine here because it's way more electronegative than the hydrogen here. And so you'll have a resulting partial negative, and so this is a delta, by the way, this just means partial charge. So you can have a partial negative charge here because these two electrons are going to spend a little bit more time over here, and uh, you'll have a partial positive as a result over here. And uh, this molecule will be the same thing. And then you will have a dipole interaction, which is represented by this dashed line here between this partial positive and, or sorry, partial negative and partial positive here. All right, next, hydrogen bonding. And so it's important to note that it's a specific type of dipole interaction. Um, and it happens when the electronegativity difference between the two atoms is so great. Um, so it involves hydrogen. And when hydrogen is connected to one, uh, another atom that has a great electronegativity, it could be nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. And so the classic example is water. So here's H2O molecules here. And so, uh, these electrons here, this uh, oxygen here, will attract these two electrons in this bond, um, and then it'll give this a partial negative, and then these two electrons spend less time over here, so that'll be partial positive. It's the same thing that happens with uh, this other um, oxygen-hydrogen bond here, and you have a partial positive here. This molecule, same thing, and then there's going to be interactions between these two molecules based upon the partial charges. And so you have a partial negative here and this partial positive, they're gonna be attracted to each other. So in this case, this H bonding is uh, represented by this dashed line here, that there's gonna be an interaction between this partial negative on this oxygen and this partial positive on this uh, hydrogen. All right, the strongest intermolecular force is ionic. The ionic force uh, is the attraction between a negative and positively charged particles. And uh, the ionic force arises due to transfers of electrons from one particle to another. And so again, your particles could be uh, ions, atoms, molecules. And so the case here is the classic uh, sodium chloride reaction where you have sodium, which has one valence electron being transferred completely to chlorine. And then you end up with sodium chloride because this positive and this negative here attract each other. 